you don't actually smoke. Right. Do you always lie in your songs? Well, I was high all the time, but everybody else was smoking around me. Is it true that you once asked Snoop Dogg to stop smoking the on set? Yeah. He said, leave me a f alone, 50 days. F is legal. So it didn't work. No, I didn't chill, but he, he, he's gonna do what he's gonna do. He's gonna smoke it anyway. Do you think there's anyone who smokes more than Snoop? Wiz? Wiz Khalifa, maybe? He's telling the truth. In your song, In the Club, you write, You can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. Is the bottle actually full of bub? When it first opened, yeah. Is it not full of ginger ale? You know, I've, I've filled champagne bottles with ginger ale. So, technically that song is also a lie. Are there any other tracks you lied in? Yeah, there's points that you say things. While rap fans are looking up to and adoring their favorite rappers, sometimes they seem to forget that the messages, as well as the entire image, is oftentimes just an illusion. Even though they say they're forever tough, some snitch on each other, some were cops, aka correctional officers, and some are just putting on an image, not doing what they say they do in their music. But since nobody will make a video on this topic, I want to come out here and publicly say that rap is all an image. Here is Rick Ross. No, not this Rick Ross. This is Rick Ross. This guy was the original Rick Ross, whom Rick Ross the rapper had stolen his name from. It was the 90s, and crack was flooding the streets of the United States. A man known as Freeway Ricky was a crack dealer at the time, supplying all these crack junkies with their necessities. But a man named William, known now as Rick Ross, he wanted to be feared. He wanted people to see him as the boss and his music. So he would take the name of the drug dealer Freeway Rick and rap about the lifestyle of Freeway Rick. When in reality, he himself was not doing everything he was rapping about. Definitely, I got on the name like 10 years ago when that, it wasn't about that. It was about what I was going to turn it into. Since Rick Ross just admitted to his name being stolen from Freeway Rick, I think it's safe to say that Freeway Rick is the real Rick Ross. Listening to Rick Ross music, you'd hear all types of street stuff, you know, drug lord stuff, and music that portrays and glorifies the street life and the gangster culture. You'd also be surprised to find out that back in the 90s, this same Rick Ross that makes these types of music, he himself was a cop. And when he was asked if he was a correctional officer, you would have thought he was a politician the way he dodged the questions. Rick Ross don't did it all to get money. I don't did it all except set dudes up, put dudes behind bars, and that's what's important to me. And whenever I read a blog or if I came to radio stations, that cr of me being a CEO never been a pressure question for me. Because if I could go back to the hood and sell 50 of them things, I could go sell 50 CDs. So that ain't no pressure at all. So I just wanted to put it in perspective, respect my homies that's involved, you understand? And when certain things come up, Ross don't address that. And that's what I'm gonna respect, you know what I mean? Even though he dodged those questions like they were punches, Ross was employed as a prison guard in Florida from December 1995 until the summer of June 1997. Now, some of you may think, I'm trying to bash Rick Ross, right? That's not the case here. We all know Rick Ross is a very smart man. He owns multiple franchises of the famous Wingstop. He owns the champagne line called Bel Air, and he has made a fortune in the rap industry. This just goes to show you that not everything really is as it seems in the rap industry. Just like the story of Future, a person who I like to call a chemist who mixes chemicals. Future is known for mixing all types of drugs, but as time goes on, you'd realize that Future doesn't even do as much drugs as he portrays in his music. I had a conversation with Future one time in the studio, and he said something that I will never forget. And he laughed while he said it. He was like, yeah, you know, people, people be thinking I do um, so many, so, like people be thinking I, I'm really doing a lot of drugs because I rap about it all the time. Mm. But they don't even be knowing I'm a lightweight. I said, er, in my head. Because there are a lot of people that are huge Future fans, for instance. And that's how they're going to feel closer to him, because they're doing what they're hearing him rap about. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that he's he not, ain't on it like that. Not like that, no. 
In drinking terms, Future, the rapper who raps about drugs all the time, is actually a lightweight, someone who becomes drunk or very high easily. But how could this be, right? Listening to Future's music would make you feel like you were in the clouds without a care in the world. You know, like a space cadet on cloud nine with no parachute. The sad case here being many kids who have already emulated these things they've heard through music and are acting out on those messages. For example, the kid who listened to Lil Wayne and became influenced by Lil Wayne's music, leading to him destroying his entire life. That was the story of Timmy. As a young boy who grew up in the inner cities, Timmy looked up to rappers like Lil Wayne as if they were gods. Their music spoke to him in a way that nothing else did, providing a voice for his frustration and a window into a world that showed a life that he had never seen before. At first, Timmy just listened to the music. He loved the way Lil Wayne rhymed and flowed, but as he got older, he started to take the messages in the music more seriously. When Lil Wayne rapped about drugs and violence, Timmy took it as a sign that those were the paths to success and he wanted to be like his god Lil Wayne. So he started experimenting with drugs, at first just smoking weed with his friends, but soon moving on to the harder stuff. He started hanging out with the wrong crowds, getting into fights, and stealing to pay for his habits. As days went by and years passed, Timmy's life spiraled out of control. He started to realize that he had made some terrible mistakes. He had dropped out of school, he had lost all his friends, and he was now facing time in jail for the possession of drugs. And all for what, right? To follow in the footstep of a rapper that didn't know he existed? And not just Timmy, right? Juice WRLD himself had listened to Future's music at a very young age and had been following the messages of those songs. Because of this, he ran into Percocet pills, trying oxycodone just at the age of 13, which would later be the same drug that would take his life just 10 years later. The story of Juice WRLD and Future. For example, my freshman year, I ran into some Percocets my freshman year, 14, 15 years old, 13, 14, whatever the fuck they age you. I ran into some Percocets my freshman year. Niggas was calling me and my homie Clucks, right? Two years later, three years later, Future dropped 56 nights. By the way, Future <laughs> is the GOAT. Future <laughs> dropped 56 nights. Niggas is hitting my phone like, will you get all them perks from them Zans? Well, like, because of some music. And like I said, I don't know if I said this earlier in here or in some having a convo with somebody else, but hearing that music at such a young age, nigga, I was trying to sip lean in sixth grade. When Future found out he had done this type of damage, he replied, oh shoot, how many other sixth graders did I influence to drink lean? One of the first things that Juice World told Future when they met up to make their 2018 record World on was that Future had influenced him to try lean. Juice World told Vulture.com, that's the first thing I told him. He was just like, wow, he kind of apologized. Future later reacted to this situation in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine saying, quote, when he told me that, I was like, oh, sh what have I done? It really bothered me. It bothered me a lot. More than I thought it would bother me when he told me that. How many other sixth graders did I influence to drink lean? This sh really messed me up for a minute. It's all I could think about. Like, damn, what have I done? What have I done to other people? From the perspective of the rapper, I could understand why he would put a certain image in his music. If Future, for example, were to begin rapping about God, his kingdom, and how good God was, nobody would listen to it. Today, in our society, what's cool to us is drugs, sex, and even murder. And those are the things that sells. Even in music, movies, TV shows, facts. Someone on Reddit made a great point stating that image is around 50% of the reason someone listens to an artist. Like imagine ASAP Rocky look like this. I guarantee you, you would never listen to him rap about being that PMF again. That point was valid. PMF in this case meaning pretty much created by ASAP Rocky, meaning a male who doesn't care about what other people thinks and he's very high in fashion. A braggadocious term indeed. That image is what the fans buy, is what Timmy bought at his age, leading to him getting locked up. It's what Juice WRLD bought that got him drinking leans and popping Percocet pills at the age of 13. Nobody give a fuck about what y'all niggas did three years ago. I don't think y'all niggas understand what I was talking about in my last video. What y'all did four years ago, three years ago, and living y'all rap, y'all don't do. I know that personally. What y'all gonna give me 48 hours? Yo, wait two months. Yo, this thing gonna die? Where? Where I'ma die? Fuck Chief Keith. Fuck Lil Reese. 
Fuck all them niggas. Fuck y'all niggas. Fuck my nigga. This fucking Treyway, nigga. Trey I Way. bet y'all niggas pull up to New Jersey now, nigga. Jersey ain't my city, but my brothers is there. You heard me? You know what I'm saying? New York shit, man. This fucking Treyway, man. This is Mr. Hernandez. While coming up in rap, he wanted to be feared. He wanted to be respected like all the other rappers. So, he'd flex loads of money, flex his jewelry, go into his enemy's neighborhood, and even diss the dead. He boasted about his gangster lifestyle and how hard he was. But when he was arrested and got a real taste of being a gangster, now knowing what Jill felt like, he soon turned back like a whale on everything he had ever said. As he sat in that cold, regretful, and ruthless prison cell, and he knew that gangster life wasn't for him and that he'd never wanted to spend the rest of his life in that prison cell. So what did he do? 6 9 snitched. He snitched on his fellow gang members and gave the police everything they needed to take them all down. His sentence was reduced with all his gang members receiving eternity in prison. When this happened, you know, I couldn't help but wonder what happened to all that image, all that, you know, things he said on the internet. What happened to all of those? Was it all fake from the beginning? Was everything 6 9 ever said? Did he mean it? Here is another case of when someone taught the walk, but when it came time to walk the walk, they couldn't walk that walk. The whole point of this is kids and people as a whole, you know, are being influenced by these people's music, not taking in the fact that it may just be for entertainment and just, you know, some people are just doing it to make money because it's what sells. And Tune, what about the 1% of rappers that's actually living that life? Yeah, granted, there's actually some rappers who are actually living this life that they say they do. But still, you know, I don't think we should be glorifying murders, murderers. It's just, it's sick, in my opinion, killing people, the fetish to kill. It's just the sick thing to be doing, right? You know, it's the highest crime in the world. Like, if you murder somebody today, guarantee that you would at least be getting life in prison. So, I mean, 6 9 before he received, you know, any types of fame or recognition, this was who he is. Look at his skin with no tats. Just the regular kid. You know, so he came to the camera and now saying, oh yeah, I'm this, this, that. This is the power of marketing. It's all entertainment. Never, never, never take this into account. Listen to it, take it for entertainment. And personally, I do listen to rap music, right? And I enjoy it, you know? It, and I feel like entertainment is what everyone should see rap music as. It shouldn't be nothing that you should be acting on, right? I resonate with a lot of black artists and I don't know what I would be listening to if it wasn't for rap, right? The catchy melodies, the 808s, the beats, the hooks. Oh my goodness, I love rap, right? Rap is the foundation of music. Everybody listens to rap. As much as I listen though, I know to never attempt you know what i'm hearing in my ears through these music because sometimes you know you hear some crazy stuff and you ask yourself did he really do all of that stuff you know god damn but there are unfortunate people out here who will you know they're not like me they they take these messages in and they act on it and these people is kind of who this, this video is for people that think you know rap is really what it is no it's it's not it's not it's really not in conclusion you know when you hear someone on the internet and you know they say they're doing something their real life may be well contrary to that thing they said they say that they're doing you know not all that glitters is gold right and you know there's some very beautiful flowers too with some you know they're deadly but they look good good looking flowers with deadly poisons it's crazy never been influenced by what you see or hear as we conclude this video i want you to think for yourself is rap all an image 